Hello and good evening. You're watching the live broadcast at 9 p.m. on Sansa TV. This is The News with me, Bhavna Nair. Let's get started with the top five stories that are making headlines this evening. Gulam Nabi Azad resigns from Congress, writes five-page letter to interim president Sonia Gandhi, says remote control model ruined party. Pending cases are a big challenge for courts, says Chief Justice N.V. Ramana at farewell ceremony underscores greater use of technology and artificial intelligence. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says India's economic growth rate will be 7.4% in current financial year, calls for substantive debate on freebie culture. Defence Minister Rajanath Singh holds talk with Tanzanian counterpart on enhancing bilateral cooperation. Both sides agree to explore avenues for defence and industrial cooperation. Rain and flood wreak havoc in Pakistan. Three crore people displaced. Disaster claims 937 lives, including 343 children. National emergency declared. Some more important news of the day in brief now. Supreme Court dismisses petition challenging denial of sanction to prosecute UP Chief Minister. Yogi Adityanath in a case relating to 2007 hate speech. UGC says 21 institutions functioning in a self-styled manner not recognized by it. AAI Sweden's LFP Air Navigation Services join hands to develop next generation technology for smart aviation solutions. Union Minister Jitendra Singh Alju steps to link startups with MSME sector. Foreign Minister S. Jayshankar holds talk with Argentine President, discusses trade ties, defence cooperation. Over 1 crore people screened under Ashwasan campaign in 68,000 villages, campaign to eradicate TB in tribal districts. Supreme Court calls for expert panel and all-party meeting to discuss freebies. Order live-streamed in a historic first to mark outgoing Chief Justice N.V. Ramana last day. India and Bangladesh finalised the text of MOU on interim water sharing of Kushyara River. Artworks worth $1 billion belonging to late Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen to be sold at largest art auction in history. And Roger Federer retains top spot as world's highest paid tennis players for 17th year despite not playing a match for 14 months. And now, the top story of the day in the news. Senior Congress leader Gulam Nabi Azad resigned from all party positions, including its primary membership on Friday. His resignation has come as a major blow to the already embattled party. Stating that he was going so with a heavy heart, he accused the Congress of committing fraud on the party in the name of sham internal polls. In a five-page letter to Congress, President Sonia Gandhi Azad described the party as comprehensively destroyed. He said that at the national level, the Congress has conceded political space available to the BJP and state-level space to regional parties. He alleged that this happened because the leadership in the past eight years has tried to force a non-serious individual at the helm of the party. He said the leadership should have undertaken a Congress Joro exercise across the country before starting Bharat Joro Yatra. So, in this time, हम ये उम्मीद करते थे कि गुलाम नबी आजाद साहब जैसे वरिष्ठ नेता कांग्रेस के कार्यकर्ताओं के साथ मिलकर के विपक्ष की आवाज और जनता की आवाज के अंत को अपना बल देते दुख की बात यह है कि वो इस आवाज के अंदर अपना हिस्सा नहीं बनना चाह रहे ये बड़े दुख की बात है मूविंग ऑन टू अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट हेडलाइन डिफेंस मिनिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह हेल्ड एक्सटेंसिव टॉक विद हिज विजिटिंग टंजानियन काउंटरपार्ट स्टगोमिना लॉरेंस टैक्स ऑन फ्राइडे the talks focused on boosting bilateral military to military cooperation in line with India's broader priority to deepen strategic ties with Africa. In the discussions, the two defence ministers also explored new avenues for defence and industrial cooperation. Rajanath Singh said that India considered 
Tanzania as major Western Indian Ocean player. Earlier, Defence Minister Rajanath Singh received Tanzanian Minister of Defence. She was also accorded the Tri-Service Guard of Honour. She also laid wreath and paid homage to martyred soldiers at the National War Memorial in New Delhi. Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramana has termed pendency of cases a huge challenge. The CGI is demitting office today. He expressed regret for not being able to pay much attention to issues of listing and posting of matters for hearing in the Supreme Court, adding that they are busy in firefighting on all the days. He also stressed on the need for modern technology tools and artificial intelligence to find a solution. The popular perception is that the Indian judiciary was alien and quite distant to the general public. There are also still millions of suppressed people who needs judicial help, who are apprehensive to approach the judiciary in times of need. Moving on, new generation surveillance equipment was used to track and neutralize three terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir's Uri sector on Thursday. The army said that the high-tech equipment was used during the anti-infiltration operation along the line of control included aerial and ground-based sensors and weapons. The army said that the operation was launched following credible inputs from various sources including the military intelligence, the state police and army's own sources on the ground. The GOC said the terrain where the operation was carried out was extremely challenging. The own teams kept the area under observation so as to check for the remnants of this terrorist group. Thereon, once the area was secured and sanitized, own teams undertook search in the feasible areas within the minefield and recovered three killed terrorists along with the weapons and other stores. The Sukhoi fighter aircraft has once again proved its mettle in foreign skies. IAF Su-30 MKI Fighters took part in the joint combat pitch black exercises in Australia. 17 countries including India and America took part in the exercises. Pitch black will continue till September 8. Indian economy is estimated to grow at 7.4% in 2022-23. Addressing the FE Best Bank Award program, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said this momentum is expected to continue in the next financial year. She said the IMF and the World Bank have projected India's growth rate to be globally the fastest for the next two financial years, stating that the global situation continues to be challenging. Finance Minister called for a substantive debate on freebies. She added that political parties making poor promises should make budgetary provisions to take care of the expenditure and not burden other institutions. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla has departed from Canada after the 65th Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference concluded in Halifax. He thanked the presiding officers of both the Houses of Parliament of Canada for hosting the conference. On the concluding day of the CPC, Birla met with the Indian diaspora in the Halifax. He stressed that youth of India and Canada should join hands, exchange knowledge, skills and experiences for development of both countries. Speaking about aspirations and achievements of New India, he stated that India will continue to become a developed nation by 2047 and Indian diaspora will have a key role to play in its progress. उन लोकतांत्रिक संस्थाओं को सशक्त मजबूत जनता के प्रति जवाबदेही और उनकी कार्यकुशलता को बेहतर करने के लिए समय समय पर कार्यक्रम आयोजित करती रहती है और हम सब उन संस्थाओं के अनुभवों को आपस में साझा कर कर हमारी लोकतांत्रिक संस्थाओं को जनता के प्रति और जवाबदेह बना के लिए कार्य करते रहते हैं Moving on to our next story, all preparations have been made for the demolition of Supertex illegal twin towers in Noida, Apex and Siyan on Sunday afternoon. Besides the government-run facilities, three private hospitals are also preparing to accommodate patients in case of any untoward incident. Over 5,000 residents of Emerald Court and the ATS Village, the two closest societies to the Twin Towers, will be evacuated by 7 a.m. on Sunday. Around 2,700 vehicles will also be removed from the premises. The residents will 
take away around 150 to 200 of their pets too. An exclusion zone will be created at a radius of up to 500 meters around the Twin Towers where, the, where new, no human or animal will be allowed. Residents in the nearby areas have been advised to wear masks, glasses and avoid going out in the wake of the demolition. Over 3,700 kilogram explosives are being used to implode the Twin Towers. चार सौ के लगभग सिविल पुलिस पर्सनल रहेंगे इसके अलावा पी भी है और एन का एक टीम के लिए रिक्वेस्टेशन लेटर चला गया है तो एन का एक टीम भी वहाँ मौजूद रहेंगे साथ साथ वहाँ पे आठ एम्बुलेंसेस का हम लोग व्यवस्था करा रहे हैं और चार फायर टेंडर्स को इसके अलावा जो कंटिजेंसी के लिए हम लोग डी महोदय को पत्राचार भी कर चुके हैं और तीन हॉस्पिटल्स आरक्षित हो गए हैं And now let's trace the monsoon situation in the nation. Starting with Rajasthan, flood-like situation persists in many areas. NDRF is conducting rescue ops in severely hit places. The water level of Chambal River in Dholpur has crossed the danger mark. The water in Chambal River is about 14 meters above the danger mark, and many low-lying areas situated on the banks of Chambal River has been submerged. The water level in the rivers of Uttar Pradesh has increased after heavy rains in neighboring states. In Oraya, 15 villages have been affected by the floods. About 95,000 cusacks of water has been released from Ganga Barrage in Kanpur. Low-lying areas of Prayagraj, Unnao and Fatehpur are facing danger of being submerged. Many parts of Gujarat experienced heavy rain today. Water is being released from the dams of Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh after increasing the water level, which raised the water level of Sabamati River. Over 70,000 cusacks of water was released into the river of Dharoi Dam. Nearly 100 villages are still submerged in Odisha due to double floods in Mahanadi and Subarnarekha rivers. 10 lakh people have been affected due to the calamity in the 14 flood-affected districts. Cases of diarrhea and other waterborne diseases are being reported in the state since past 15 days. And now, let's take a look at the news from across the nation. President Draupadi Murmu accepted the credential of the ambassadors of four countries, Germany, Suriname, Ecuador and Somalia, at a function at Rashtrapati Bhavan. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman Metz meets U.S. Deputy Finance Minister Vali Adiamo. The two leaders held talks on the issues of the global economy and the financial sector. The Supreme Court has called for setting up of an expert committee and convening an all-party meeting to discuss the issue of promising free items to woo the public. This was done on the last day of Justice N.V. Ramana's tenure. The Supreme Court has increased the limit for annual production of iron ore for Bellary, Chitradurga and Tumaru, Tumakuru districts of Karnataka. This limit has been increased to 35 million tons per annum from the existing 28 million tons. Senior RJD leader Avad Bihari Chaudhary was unanimously elected Speaker of the Bihar Legislative Assembly. The post fell vacant after the resignation of Vijay Kumar Sinha. In Bihar, both the houses of the state legislature were adjourned synodai with which the special session came to an end. The Mahagadbandhan government proved its majority during this special session. The third one day Bharat Express is all set to run on the track. One day, Bharat crossed the speed limit of 180 km per hour during the trial. The second speed trial of the train took place between Kota Nagara section. Deputy Speaker of Delhi Legislative Assembly Rakhi Birla took action against all eight BJP MLAs, including BJP MLA Ajay Mahavar. The BJP MLAs were thrown out with the help of marshals for the whole day of the special session. Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Thami inaugurated helicopter services between Dehradun and Almora, Pithoragarh from Jolly Brandt Airport. Slipping into a short break here, but on the other side. Taiwan leaders say that Beijing's recent large-scale military exercises is disrupting and threatening world order. All this and much more just after this short break. You stay tuned to Sunset TV for more news.
Some critics describe Latin America as the last frontier of India's foreign policy. India works very closely with this whole continent on global issues. The most of the Latin American countries, but uh, Brazil specifically and India, were quite obsessed during the 60s, 70s, 80s on development. Argentina and India are at both democracies. So we understand uh, how uh, our systems works and how our relationship inside our countries are. Welcome back after the break. You're watching the news in time now for all the big developments from the Russia-Ukraine war front that has now entered its seventh month. Alarm bells were ringing in Ukraine on Thursday when fire near the Europe's largest nuclear plant caused it to disconnect from the power grid. As the fighting continues in Zaporizhia region, fears of potential nuclear holocaust have once again gripped the country that was home to the world's worst atomic accident in 1986 at Chernobyl. Here's a report. The world narrowly avoided a nuclear catastrophe at the Zaporizhia nuclear station. Ukrainian President Zelensky said after the nuclear plant was cut off from the country's power grid on Thursday. The nuclear plant in the Russian-occupied region was disconnected from the country's national power grid for the first time in history. It said that fires in the ash pit of the coal power station near the reactor complex led to power outage. After the fires were put out, power supply in Zaporizhia Oblast was restored. The plant's three other power lines had already been damaged in previous shelling incidents. Both Ukraine and Russia have blamed each other once again for the shelling that put the nuclear plant at risk. Amid fears of a nuclear disaster looming large, a mission from the UN's International Atomic Energy Agency is expected to visit the nuclear power plant next week. IAEA Director General Rafael Grossi said on Thursday that the visit will take place soon, as both Kiev and Moscow have accepted the need for it. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And more news now, Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a decree to increase the number of troops by 1,37,000 to a total of 1.15 million by the end of the year. Coming amid Moscow's military action in Ukraine, the move will boost Russia's armed forces to 2.04 million. The new order will enter into force on 1st January 2023. Britain will share technical expertise with Ukraine to help the country's rebuild its infrastructure and transport network, which has suffered massive damage due to Russia's invasion. British Transport Secretary Grant Shapps signed the deal with his Ukrainian counterpart via video link on Thursday. British experts will offer technical knowledge in airport, runway and port reconstruction and will help identify training opportunities for aviation staff. U.S. President Joe Biden reaffirmed his country's commitment to Ukraine during a call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Thursday. The White House said that Biden also congratulated Ukraine as it marked a particularly significant Independence Day earlier this week. Biden and Zelensky also reiterated their call for Russia to retain full control of the Zaporizhia to Ukraine and for IAEA to be given access to the plant. Russia's defense ministry said its forces have destroyed a United States-made M777 howitzer, which it claimed was used by Ukrainian troops to shell the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Russia said the howitzer had been destroyed west of the town of Marhens in Ukraine's central eastern Dnipropetrovsk region. And time now for some other global updates. Taiwan's leader on Friday said China and Russia are disrupting and threatening the world order with Beijing's recent large-scale military exercises near the island and Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. President Tsai Ing-wen was speaking during a meeting in Taipei with U.S. Senator Marsha Blackburn, who is on the second visit by members of Congress since House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's trip earlier this month. His report. Taiwan's Foreign Minister Joseph Wu said on Friday that China's motivation is to destroy the Taiwan Strait status quo in a briefing with foreign journalists in Taipei. His remarks came a day after U.S. Senator Marsha Blackburn arrived in Taiwan. 
Blackburn, a Republican from Tennessee, landed in Taipei late Thursday after visiting Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea. Wu said China wants to destroy the status quo and cut down on Taiwan's defensive space. Wu added, Taiwanese people won't bow to the pressure even though China is trying to cut off Taiwan's international support. Taiwan is seeking stepped-up defense cooperation and additional weaponry from United States along with closer economic ties. Wu said that China's military operation is not only around Taiwan, but it also has ambitions to gain control in East China Sea, South China Sea and Indian Ocean. Blackburn said in Taipei that China was just waiting for an excuse to bully Taiwan. During her three-day visit, Blackburn is also due to meet with the head of Taiwan's National Security Council. Washington has no official diplomatic ties with Taipei in difference to China but remains the island's biggest security guarantor, with U.S. law requiring it to ensure Taiwan has the means to defend itself and to regard threats to the island as a matter of grave concern. Bureau report, Sunset TV. And now news from Pakistan. The Pakistan government declared a national emergency after rain-induced floods claim 937 lives, including 343 children, and left 30 million people homeless. In the Sindh province, 306 people lost their lives in flood and rain-related incidents. 234 people died in Baluchistan, while 185 lives were lost in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. 165 people lost their lives in Punjab. 37 people have died in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and 9 in Gilgit-Baltistan region. And more stories from the international world. Now, U.S. UK Foreign Secretary Prime Ministerial Candidate Liz Truss waded into controversy after she said that the jury was still out on French President Emmanuel Macron. Her remark came after she was asked if Mr. Macron was friend or foe of the UK at a Tory leadership hustings. Britain's Foreign Secretary and candidate to be the country's next Prime Minister said on Thursday she was unsure whether French President Emmanuel Macron was a friend or foe. When questioned at the campaign event for the leadership of ruling Conservative Party, Liz Truss said the jury is out. She qualified the response saying she would trust Macron based on his actions rather than his statements. Ever since Britain's exit from European Union, diplomatic spats have occurred between France and Britain over border controls and the management of migrants and asylum seekers. Asked his response to the comment by Truss, French President Emmanuel Macron, who is in Algeria, said Britain is an ally of France and its people will always be friends of France, despite the occasional error made by its leaders. Macron said, Britain is a friend of France and I don't doubt that for a second. He added that if France and Britain cannot say whether they are friends or enemies, then we are headed for serious problems. Bureau report, Sunset TV. News now from some other parts of the world in this quick world wrap. The opening ceremony of Russia's Spexia Tower Military Music Festival and Tattoo took place in Moscow's Red Square on Thursday evening. The annual festival features military band parades, dance performances and firework displays. This year, bands from India, Armenia, Belarus, Egypt, Thailand and Venezuela are visiting Moscow for the event that ends on September 4. French President Emmanuel Macron laid a wreath as a tribute to soldiers who died for France at a cemetery in Algeria. Macron is on a three-day tour to the country. The visit is aimed at boosting future economic relations and healing colonial-era wounds between France and Algeria. Macron is the first visiting French president born in Algeria, became independent in 1962. The Deep Sea Contest of the International Army Games 2022 concluded on Tuesday with a closing ceremony held at Iran's Konak Navy base. The teams from Iran, Russia and China finished the first, second and third respectively. Teams from China, Russia, Iran, India, Syria and Venezuela competed in the six-day contest. Over 270 teams from 37 countries and regions are competing in the Games. A fire broke out at a passenger ship carrying 82 people near Manila in Philippines on Friday. Footage released by the Philippine Coast Guard showed that flames engulfing the passenger ship which was carrying 48 passengers and 34 crew. 
73 people have been rescued according to the Philippine Coast Guard while search operations continue for the nine missing people. Wildfires erupted in California again on Southern California San Gabriel Mountains. The fire burned 96 acres of the San Gabriel National Forest by late afternoon. A jumbo jet was called in to drop red fire retardant and helicopters were dropping water to slow the progress of the flames. So far, the fire is contained to the national forest far away from the residential areas. NASA's new moon rocket is making its debut next week. The space launch system is shorter and slimmer than the Saturn V rockets that hurled Apollo astronauts to the moon. But it's much more powerful and packing and a lot more thrust. Here's a report. NASA's new moon rocket makes its debut next week in a high-stakes test flight before astronauts get on top. The 322-foot rocket will send an empty crew capsule into a far-flung lunar orbit. If all goes well, Astronauts could be sent by 2024. Liftoff from Florida's Kennedy Space Center is set for Monday morning. It will be NASA's first human-capable moonshot in a half century, years behind schedule and billions over budget. The price tag for this single mission exceeds $4 billion. The new rocket is shorter and slimmer, than the Saturn V rockets that hurled 24 Apollo astronauts to the moon a half century ago. But it is mightier, packing 4 million kilograms of thrust. The new rocket also has a pair of strap-on boosters refashioned from NASA's space shuttles. The core stage will keep firing before separating and crashing into the Pacific in pieces. Two hours after liftoff, if all goes well, an upper stage will send the capsule Orion racing towards the moon. Using 1960s technology, NASA took just eight years to go from launching its first astronaut Alan Shepard and landing Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. By contrast, Artemis has already dragged on for more than a decade. Twelve Apollo astronauts walked on the moon from 1969 through 1972 staying no longer than three days at a time. For Artemis, NASA has an astronaut pool of 42 and will send crews to the moon for at least a week. The goal is to create a long-term lunar presence that will help send people to Mars. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And time now for all the updates from the field of sports. Sathvik Sairaj Rankiredi and Chirag Shetty became the first Indian pair to win a medal in men's doubles competition at the World Championships. The Indians upset world number two, Takura, Takura Ihoki and Yugo Kobayashi of Japan in the quarterfinals. Sathvik Chirag won 24-22, 15-21, 21-14. In the quarterfinal match at the World Championships. Pronoy won the first game 21-19 before losing the second game 6-21 and decided 18-21. James Anderson, who is playing his 174th Test overall against South Africa at Manchester in England, has achieved an incredible feat. He is the first ever cricketer to feature in 100 tests in one country. Karim Benzema and Alexia Putiyas were rewarded for outstanding seasons by winning the UEFA Men's and Women's Player of the Year prizes at the ceremony in Istanbul. An India singles challenge at the US Open qualifiers came to an end as Yuki Bhamri lost to Belgium's player in the second round. Bhamri went down in straight sets 3-6-2-6. And on that note, it's a wrap of today's edition of the news. For more updates, and news. Stay tuned to Sasana TV. Thanks for joining in. Good night. Namaskar.